So this video is going to be a little different than many of my videos in the sense that it's sort of a reaction video, but not quite. What I mean by that is some time ago, five years ago, there was a Swedish guy self-described as ugly, his own words, my experience being ugly is the name of the video, that's the title, who talks about his experiences. And basically the long and short of it is he was constantly made fun of, he was called ugly, people didn't want to associate with him. The one time he actually did have a girlfriend of some sort, she basically abused him verbally, she wouldn't allow herself to be seen in public with him, and he got treated like crap by her. It's just a long series of failures, almost entirely due to his looks, because he is objectively unattractive by every normative metric. And you can listen to the video, I'll be linking in the low bar. I'm not the first person to talk about it, lots of people have. You know the reaction channel Aubin preached, they've talked about it a few times. And as you can expect, the things that typically happen to you when you're very unattractive, they happen to him. And it's a pretty sobering video. Now, of course, in the comment section of this video, you would see a lot of cope and people saying, well, you're not really ugly, just get a better haircut, unironically, and all sorts of miscellaneous comments along those lines. But long story short, he ended up getting married fairly recently. And what happened was he ended up indirectly geomaxing. Some girl from Latin America found him apparently cute. I guess it happens. There are these exceptions. And long story short, they ended up getting married, and now she moved to Sweden, and they live together, and blah, blah, blah. Now, in the wake of this, many people are saying that the black pill, and specifically lookism and the halo effect and all these things, they're not valid. They're saying, well, if he could do it, anyone could do it. Abba, in fact, at the end of this video that he did with Abba and Preach, a more recent one covering the ugly Swedish guy, claimed that anyone can do this, but not everyone will do it. Typical pull yourself up by your bootstraps nonsense rhetoric. And I've seen a lot of people claiming now, since this revelation has been brought to the public, that he got married to somebody who, by the way, is probably at least 1.5, maybe even two points higher than him on the look scale. So he's very unattractive. And his wife is an average looking woman. And so people use this as an example that allegedly counters what we know about lookism and human biology in general. Now it's always interesting to me how few people listen. I notice in the comment section, very few people listen to my words. And on that one video of his, which has close to 20 million views, mind you, lots of these comments too, ignoring reality, ignoring what he said. He talks about his experiences, and he's in his early 20s in that video, of being treated like dog crap by people because he's so unattractive. Women calling him ugly. Men calling him ugly. Just nobody wants to associate with him. Fast forward to now, he got married, his wife is average looking, and people are claiming none of that counted. Looks don't really matter. And a lot of it, as indicated by the statement made by Abba of the Abba and Priest channel, has been reduced to Anyone, no matter what their looks, anyone in the world can do what he did. You just got to try and put in some effort. And then like magic, it just happens. So the real question is, does ugly Swedish guy's experience being ugly, his own words, and his current experience of being married, having gotten married to somebody who is average looking, does this disprove lookism and the science behind it, the halo effect? and our general behavior and our psychology as human beings. Many people would have you believe it does, because if he could do it, anyone could do it. Now, is this actually the case? Of course it's not, of course it's not. His success in getting married to an average looking woman as a sub five himself is not proof or evidence that the rhetoric and theories surrounding lookism are not true, it's poppycock. Because again, listen to what he said in his original video from five years ago, being treated like crap, being miserable, being lonely, thousands upon thousands of women rejecting him nonstop. The one woman he did get with, treating him like utter fecal matter, abusing him verbally, using him, etc., etc. That is the experience, the average experience. And he's telling you why, because he's very unattractive, which he is, unfortunately. So that's the first counter to this claim that lookism isn't true. His whole life, he was treated in a horrific manner simply because he was sub five, simply because he was ugly. That in itself, he's telling you with his own words that lookism is true. At the end of that video, he suggests you get plastic surgery. He suggests that if it's so bad, maybe 
the people of the hospital will grant you mercy and give you plastic surgery for free. So he's telling you that. And fast forward a few years, someone out there apparently found him cute. Now, I will submit to you that that's highly anomalous. Again, thousands and thousands of women rejected them and called them ugly. And one woman, some Latina, not in Sweden, mind you, very important, thought he was cute and ended up marrying him. Are there anomalous people out there? Absolutely. Of course. There's a woman out there who's six foot five. I guarantee it to you. But does the fact that there's a six foot five woman out there prove the average height of women? Probably not. Unless you're one of those people saying, oh, I know a woman who's really tall. She's six foot five. As if that invalidates the rule that on average women are shorter than men and the vast, vast majority of women are not six foot five. So there are anomalies out there, obviously. Question is, should the anomalies be used as a benchmark for our understanding of reality? No, they shouldn't. Anomalies are just that. As people are wont to say, exceptions prove the rule. This Latina woman, who is average looking, married someone and apparently finds attractive somebody who is definitely sub five. Now, setting aside all his other attributes, setting aside everything else, maybe he has a ginormous schlong. Maybe he's a beast in bed. Maybe he makes good money. Maybe he's smart. Maybe he has a quote-unquote good personality. Maybe he's nice. But the fact that somebody out there found a sub-5 cute enough does not disprove the rule. It proves the rule because of all the thousands of females that rejected him prior to that. And as he himself in the video states, in his own demographic, the Swedish demographic, he was basically universally rejected. He could not find a partner of any duration. So de facto, he ended up geomaxing indirectly. And here's the kicker. His video has close to 20 million views. Many people have made reaction videos. Abba and Preach, a very large reaction channel of about 2 million subs, I'd say, that get tons and tons of views and tons of traffic, endorsed his videos. Other people have reviewed his videos and other people have talked about it. And here's the ultimate kicker. His current wife, the Latina, found out about his video because he became YouTube famous. After the video having gotten millions of views to begin with, she discovered him. And for whatever reason, he corresponds to her taste. Very, very unusual, highly anomalous. So I submit to you again, if anyone can do it, why did he not have success prior to having a video that got millions of views, dozens of reactions, some of them from major channels like Abba and Preach? Why is it that he was only discovered by somebody who either saw past his looks or thought he was cute after his video had already gotten millions of views, tons of traffic online, and therefore he became known in the world? So in some sense, he indirectly and unintentionally status maxed. That's what happened. He got really big because his video blew up and some girl out there, some random girl who happened to be average looking, which means better looking than he is, thought he was cute. Does that disprove anything? No. What would have happened had his video not gotten millions of views if Abba and Preach had not reacted several times to the ugly Swedish guy? If other people hadn't reacted? Well, he would have had a lot less traffic and his current wife would almost certainly not have discovered him. So this is a pure crapshoot. The normative experience he had throughout most of his life, before he met his wife, by dint of luck, because his YouTube video got millions of views, was the experience he told you about in that video five years ago about being ugly. Everyone treated him like canine fecal matter. Yes, at some point in time he got laid. Okay, that's a little different. But here's something to consider. Think about the culture and the country he comes from. People don't believe me, but lookism is much worse in the United States than it is in Europe. I mean, he had some kind of modicum of success. He got his pee-pee wet, I think twice before meeting his wife. Very rare for a sub five. In the US, none of this would have happened. Nobody cares about this sort of thing. He at the very least grew up in a society that tends to be more concerned, more caring, more willing to give people chances. The opposite of the United States in many ways. And again, I can't drive this point home enough. The halo effect is real. His own life experience, or to use the new speak of today's Zoomers, his own lived experience tells you that. Nothing has been disproven. So you can say yes, if you make a video on YouTube, 
And then over the years, it blows up and gets millions and millions of views and other people cover it. And then some random chick online happens to think that you're cute and then contacts you and then you get married. That somehow disproves all of his previous experiences and Lukism in general. That's just BS. For any one of the men out there like him, the vast, vast majority of them will almost never find a partner because they're just too ugly. And that's unfortunately the reality. You cannot pass what we call the basic looks test. Both men and women have a basic looks test. And if you can't pass that, you're screwed. These other things people talk about, status, personality, interests, those matter to some degree if and only if you have passed the basic looks test. And he failed thousands of people's looks tests again and again and again. And only a pure fluke of some random chick online from South America of her discovering him after his video had gotten tens of millions of views, that's what changed things. Now you can't tell me that's a workable formula for the vast, vast majority of people, let alone for the vast, vast majority of sub fives out there. That's not the reality we inhabit, no matter what people would have you believe. People ignore this one video and all the other videos that he posted talking about his experience being unattractive, being treated terribly, and hyper-focus on this highly, highly anomalous female and highly anomalous event of him getting married. The guy was absolutely desperate for female attention, and he lucked out. It happens. Some people win the lottery. Some people are born geniuses. Some people are born super attractive. Some people, like the greatest philosopher of our time, Jeremy Meeks, can be a convicted criminal, and nonetheless rise to great fame and heights as a model, as well as an enlightened philosopher. These things exist, but using the anomalies, the freakish occurrences in life, is a terrible metric, a terrible barometer for judging what is realistic and what's likely. What's going to happen to all the guys who look like him, or even worse, who quote-unquote try nonstop and they don't have videos on YouTube that blow up to millions of views. They're invisible. Are they going to keep on trying and trying and trying? Well, they probably will do that to a point. And when they fail, and failure is very likely given the reality we inhabit, again, not based on the anomalies, they will get talked down to. They will be ridiculed. They will be told, to paraphrase Abba of the Abba and Priest channel, that everyone can do it, but not everyone will. Meaning that ultimately their failure, these sub fives failure to find a girlfriend, a partner, and joy in life is solely due to them and their lack of effort. Some intrinsic thing that they're just not exerting upon the world. But ugly Swedish guy, he was successful because of some magic power he possesses. That's why. There's magic you see in human beings. This is what most people believe. This is what Abba believes. Human beings are magic. And some people turn the magic switch on and some people don't. And the ones who don't, it's their own fault because they don't want to turn on the magic switch. Don't you know? Poor people who aren't rich, they want to be poor. It's their own fault for not being rich. It's a consequence of you not turning on the magic I want it switch. Because if you turned on the magic I want it switch, all your problems would disappear. You would have no flaws. You would be rich. You would be at least a multimillionaire. You would be attractive. You would be funny. You would have boatloads of friends. You would be incredibly intelligent. It's all because you are not trying. Because everyone who succeeds has put in a great amount of effort. Just ask the famous and enlightened philosopher Jeremy Meeks, the model citizen. He put in tremendous effort in his life to get where he is right now. So if you're trying, you are guaranteed to succeed. And everyone in life who's failed, whether it be their looks, lack of money, lack of smarts, lack of whatever, that's just because they didn't try hard enough. Because trying guarantees you all these things in life. Now, for the record, many times, not always, you do need to put in some effort, but effort is not a guarantor of anything. It might be a necessary prerequisite, but it does not guarantee you the success. And like I said, for every one of ugly Swedish guys out there, there are probably millions of failures. Oprah Winfrey came from a poor Southern family of 12, 12 siblings, and she's a billionaire. How likely is that? coming from those circumstances. So you have to work within reality. Yes, 
You should try. You should put in effort. But you shouldn't countenance nonsense that every problem you have is somehow due to your lack of effort and you yourself standing in your way, which is the rhetoric of our time. That's just not reality. Yes, try. But don't think for a second that merely trying, if you don't have the prerequisites, such as you're extremely unattractive, you're extremely dumb, you're extremely short, whatever it might be, that somehow is going to overcome the inherent disadvantages you've been given. I'm just saying we have to work within reality. If you want to help yourself and other people, you have to work within reality and not deny it. I, for one, am just exceedingly tired of highly anomalous cases of whatever it might be, fabulous wealth, fabulous intelligence, in this case, fabulously bad looks, and despite that, finding a decent-looking wife. All these examples of people who are then not cited as anomalous or highly unusual and unlikely to happen again, but as the norm, as the standard. Ugly Swedish guy is the standard. Oprah Winfrey is the standard. Elon Musk is the standard. Jeremy Meeks is the standard. It's absurd. And yet all these normies, whether they're engaging in self-deception, delusion or not, I do not know, would have you believe that. That exceptions don't confirm the rule. Exceptions are the rule. That is the axiom of our time, unfortunately. Anyway, as always, Thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best. You keep the channel alive. And many special thanks to my donors on PayPal as well. And as for everyone else, if you can like the video, share the video, comment, subscribe, if you're not yet a subscriber. I heard that helps on YouTube, apparently. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out next time. May the gods watch over you. Until then, bye-bye for now.